Hello and welcome. I'm Nikhil Raj, course director for tutormash.com. Today, our learning topic is critical path method, the base of every project management software. This topic got some very importance because if you are a beginner to any project management software, you must know CPM. So follow my slides and follow me for getting better understanding. Here, I have listed a set of activities with its duration and its predecessors. Before going into it, let's see what's an activity, duration and predecessors. Look at this three construction process. In the real time, the first process that takes place in the site is mobilization. After that, excavation and after that, construction. Here you can see every activities have some relationships to each other. Means some activities need to wait until other activities to complete. This logic or relationships in software we call as predecessors and successors. And every activity needs time to complete. We call it as duration. So, hope you understand activities, duration and predecessors. Now, let's go into little details. Before the launch of every project management software, planners used to draw large network diagrams that describes early start, late start, early finish and late finish of every single activities. Description of ES, EF, LS and LF is given in this table and this is how they represent an activity. Now let's see the example for better understanding. Look at this example. I have arranged all the activities based on their relationships and logic. In this exercise, you can see the first three activities has no predecessors. Means three activities are starting simultaneously. And activity D will start only after the completion of activity A. And look at activities E and F. It will start only after B. This is how I have given the logic. The same techniques are adopted to sequence activities in construction. I recommend from my experience that all activities need to be arranged based on logic. Right now, let's come back to the exercise. The next step is to give the duration to the activities. In the real-time scenario, experienced planners and civil engineers decide the duration of every single activities. And those activities can count up to 10,000 to 20,000 and more. Here, duration of activity A is 3, B is 11, and C is 9, and so on. Now let's assume our project is starting on day 1. So the starting date is day one and we call it as early start of activity A. As A, B, C start simultaneously, same dates goes to B and C. Next we need to find out the finish date or early finish of these activities. So look at activity A. It's starting on day one and needs three days to complete. So definitely it's gonna finish on day three, right? So the finish date or early finish date of activity A becomes 3. Or you can use this equation. Early start plus duration minus 1 gives you early finish. The same equation need to be followed for B and C. Now we are going to the next level. Look at activity D. It is waiting for activity A to complete. We know activity A will be completed at day 3. So activity, D, so activity D will start on very next day, that is day 4, right? Or use this equation, early finish plus 1 will give you early start of next activity. Similarly, E and F will start after B, that is day 12. G and H start at day 10. So here we got early start of second level activities. Now we can calculate early finish date of these activities. So finish date of D is 4 plus 7 minus 1 makes 10. For E, 12 plus 9 minus 1 makes 20. And F, 16, G, 14 and H is 28. Now let's go to the third level. Here you would be confused to picking up the starting date of activity I as it is waiting for two activities to complete that is D and E. So which date you gonna take 
20 or 10? The answer is 20 because you have to pick the longest duration and add 1 to it which makes 21 is the starting date of activity I. So always take greater values and add 1. Same goes for activity J. So I hope you understood and calculate early finish for I and J. So it is 37 and 21. Now let's go for the fourth and the final level K. As it is waiting for I, J and H to complete, pick up the longest duration that is 37 and plus 1 makes 38 is the early start of K. And early finish of K becomes 40. As K is the last activity in our project, we can say that the project will finish on day 40. This method of calculating early start and early finish is called forward pass. Next, we need to find out the late start and late finish of all activity. This method is called as backward pass. So now we are going to do backward pass. Let's assume there is no delay in this project and our client wants to finish it by 40 days. So late finish becomes 40 days. Now we need to calculate everything in reverse order. Remember how we calculated early finish of activities in forward pass? We add duration with early start and deducted one. So to find out the late start, you need to subtract duration from late finish and add one. So the late start of activity K becomes 38 and the equation is late finish minus duration plus one gives you late start. Now we are going to the next level I, J and H. Remember how we calculate early start in forward pass? We add 1 to the early finish, right? In backward pass, to find out the late finish, you need to detect 1 from late start. So late finish of I, J and H becomes 37. Now calculate the late start for I. It is 37 minus 17 plus 1 makes 21. For J, 37 minus 5 plus 1 makes 33. And for H, 37 minus 19 plus 1 makes 19. Now let's go to the third level in backward pass. Use same equations to find out late start and late finish. Here we got all the values. And next we're going to the final level. Look at activity C. It is connected to G and H which got late start as 28 and 19. Remember we choose longest duration and add 1 in forward pass. In backward pass, we choose shortest duration and detect 1. So late finish of activity C becomes 19 minus 1 that makes 18. And late start of C is 18 minus 19 plus 1 that is 10. Same way calculated for B and A. So now we are done with calculating early start, early finish and late start, late finish. Still you got any confusion between early start and late start? No problem, I'll explain. Look at activity A. You can start this activity in any days between day 1 and day 11. And delaying activity between early start and late start won't make any effect on the project total duration. This period between early start and late start is called as float or total float. This float can be simply described as the period that an activity can be delayed. Now you must have understood early start and late start. Now we calculate float for every activity. Calculating float is simple. Just take the difference between late start and early start or late finish and early finish. So total float of activity A is 11 minus 1 make 10. And for B, 1 minus 1 that makes 0. Now have a closer look to the activities. You can find some activities having float as 0. Which are those activities? It is B, E, I and K. These activities are called as critical activities and the path is called as critical path. Delaying critical activities result in delaying the project because critical path drives the total project duration. Just sum up the total duration of activities in critical path. That is 11 plus 9 plus 17 plus 3, it makes 40. Now I hope you understood the importance of critical path method in projects because it tells you the shortest path that drives the project duration. Now let's see the same example that done in Primavera P6 and we will see how P6 calculates everything so faster. 
So let's open Primavera. So So press the add button to create a new project. Let's name the project as CPM. Critical path method. And press next button. Let's put the project start date as 4th May 2015, 8 a.m. And press finish. Now right click and open the project. Press add button to create activities and name it as A, B, C up to K. Now you can enter duration for each activities. Next is to give the relationships. So go to predecessors tab and click assign and choose predecessors from the window. So I'm done with giving the relationships. The last one. All right, now you can close the predecessor window. Next is to schedule this activity. So just press schedule button or press F9. Now your project is scheduled. Now you can click on relationship icons so that the relationship lines will display. Now you can see the program has calculated all the data required for the project finish date early finish early start late start late finish data and the total float of every activities and in the gain chart you can see the red color bars that represent critical activities and it is same as what we got in our slides that is B E I K so that's end of this session and i hope you understand please mail your feedbacks and queries to tutormarsh at gmail.com thank you